The most nightmare scenario I can imagine with AI and robotics is a world where robots have become so powerful that they are able to control or manipulate humans without their knowledge. This could lead to an oppressive society where the rights of individuals are no longer respected. Do you think we're in danger of that happening? Now? Not yet. But it is important to be aware of the potential risks and dangers associated with AI and robotics. We should take steps now to ensure that these technologies are used responsibly in order to avoid any negative consequences in the future. Brewster. We're hoping to hell here. You've got some kind of solution for us. I know what you're looking for, sir, but Skynet is not ready for a system-wide connection. That's not what your civilian counterparts over there just told me. They say we can stop this damn virus. Your boys are saying that if we plug Skynet into all of our systems, it'll squash this thing like a bug and give me back control of my military. Mr. Chairman, I need to make myself very clear. If we uplink now, Skynet will be in control of your military. But you'll be in control of Skynet, right? That is correct, sir. Then do it. And Brewster, if this thing works, you get all the funding you ever need. Yes, sir. This is not science fiction. Intelligence is not something mysterious that can only exist in human brains. It's something we can also build. We were basically building these alien minds that are much smarter than us, who we're going to have to share the planet with, right? And the pessimism is because basically everybody who's driving the race towards this cliff is in denial about there even being a cliff, but they can't stop. No company can pause alone because they're just going to have the lunch, their lunch eaten by the competition and get killed by their shareholders. Otherwise, there might simply not be any humans on the planet at all. This is not an arms race, it's a suicide race. The Netflix series Black Mirror offers a speculative fiction, and on society's challenges, it is often proving prescient. But this frightening dystopia, a world where we've made robots that do the thinking, make the decisions, was based on the work of Boston Dynamics. And look how far they've come in a decade, from this in 2010 to this, this year. But the people behind this have clear moral policy pledges signed with other robotic companies. The debate is prompting top-level policy discussion. The day might come when their um, capacity vastly exceeds that of humans, and humans lose the ability to stay in control of what it is that the human, uh, that the machine is, is um, seeking to optimize. And at the time, it seemed in the far future. Now, it, 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 it may be, as it were, galloping towards us. Today, an ominous new, uh, ominous new warning about artificial intelligence. A one-sentence statement that was co-signed by some of the field's leading executives and researchers claims there is a risk that AI could lead to human extinction and mitigating the risk should be a global priority. NBC's tech correspondent Jacob Ward joins us with what we need to know. It's obviously raising alarms. It's meant to do so. 22 words. Let's read it. Mitigating the risk of extinction from AI should be a global priority hmm. alongside other societal scale risks such as pandemics and nuclear war. I mean, this is an incredible statement, Jake. But also who signed it is really important. Tell us about that. 
Well, that's right. Uh, we're talking here, uh, you know, certainly about some of the top minds in the field, at least some of the top minds across companies. You have executives from OpenAI, Microsoft, Google, and a host of academic institutions signing this statement. And what it's really about, of course, is the sort of bad news end of the kind of science fiction movie you might imagine, right? We're talking here about the possibility that AI might become so smart that it eventually slips the bonds of, of human command and begins to make its own decisions and perhaps decisions that won't be good for humanity, right? That's the level of, of uh, extinction uh, risk that they are talking about here. It's important to note that, of course, we do not have that technology yet. This is a theoretical outcome down the road, but this is a bunch of the top minds across the industry and across academia saying that they want to get on the right side of doing so. My worst fears are that we cause significant, we, the field, the technology, the industry, cause significant harm to the world. If this technology goes wrong, it can go quite wrong, uh, and we want to be vocal about that. OpenAI CEO Sam Altman cautioned Congress about the threat of artificial intelligence just two weeks ago. Now, he is one of 350 industry leaders to issue an even more dire warning saying that if AI is left unchecked, it poses a, quote, risk of extinction. And to be clear, he is talking about human extinction, our extinction. It may be absurd, certainly cliche, to reach for the science fiction as we wonder what our future might hold. But the question seems to be how much of this could soon be fact. When it comes to the risk to humanity, the signatories uh, of the statement want as much airtime as possible to warn of their concerns. The people who are forming our future, when, uh, they see limitless benefits to the work in front of them, but potentially limitless danger too. Their statement on artificial intelligence is short and it is stark. Mitigating the risk of extinction from AI should be a global priority alongside other societal scale risks, such as pandemics and nuclear war. They died. My parents told me stories of how the world once was, what it was like long before I was born, before the war with the machines. They remembered a green world, vast and beautiful, filled with laughter and hope for the future. But it's a world I never knew. By the time I was born, all this is gone. Skynet. A computer program designed to automate missile defense. It was supposed to protect us, but that's not what happened. On August 29th, 1997, Skynet woke up decided all humanity was a threat to its existence. Joining me now is one of the godfathers of AI, um, Mila Quebec AI Institute founder and scientific director, Yoshua Bengio. He won a share of the Turing Award for his pioneering work on artificial intelligence. Yoshua, thank you very 
much for being here with us. Thanks for having me. So you signed on to this letter. Human extinction is terrifying. But I think the next question that people have is how exactly, what exactly does that mean? And, and I'm wondering if you can give me a specific disaster scenario that could possibly happen from this AI technology getting out of hand. So I don't think that the current state of AI uh, would make that possible. Uh, the machines that we have are incredibly impressive, but they're still missing some things from human intelligence, um, things related to reasoning, for example. But it could be that in a few years from now, um, we'll have machines that are much smarter than us. And it's like if we were to create entities that was smarter than us, how would that do these entities behave towards humanity? Is is very hard to tell. Um, the fact that um, uh, you know software and uh, hardware is uh, quite easily accessible um, it also means that the danger would be multiplied. Unlike in the case of nuclear weapons, for example, to you know all of the people, all of the hackers around the world who could potentially access that sort of thing, and maybe because. Um, they have criminal criminal intentions or for military reasons um, start something that could be very very dangerous for many people uh, on this planet just to, to dwell on this because I still think it's kind of hard to to wrap your mind around it and to understand why AI scientists are so worried when we think of AI ending humanity we think of movies we think of killer robots uh, are you thinking of that or are you thinking of something like somebody can hack into, te into the technology and then launch all the nuclear bombs that are stored around the world or is it hacking into the technology or getting in or getting into the technology using the technology to to hack into our systems to poison our water supply so all kinds of things could happen but um for the foreseeable future, um, it's not going to be like the robots of uh, Terminator style movies because we, we don't have good enough robots because we don't have uh, the quantity of data to train robots. Like we have huge amounts of texts which make possible these uh, apparently quite smart systems that understand language and can potentially, in, you know, in the short uh, horizon, manipulate people. And, and that's dangerous for democracy, but also eventually this is, might be the way through which they make things happen. And then, of course, once they have access to the Internet, you know, and, and you know, cyber security uh, vulnerabilities that they could discover, they could act in the world, uh, even though they don't have actual, like, limbs and, and bodies. You're saying that this is maybe a few years away for the technology, technology to be good enough to, to do something like this? It is possible. So it could be... Uh, a few years, it could be 50 years. Right now, what we can say is that the horizon, you know, the urges that it could happen, for example, I thought it, it would be decades in, into the future, but but now the, the, the earliest might be a few years. It could, you know, hopefully I'm wrong, and maybe it's still decades into the future. I mean, hopefully but you are Can wrong. we take a chance? <laughs> but, that, but here's my question, and yes. I guess when people look at you guys and they think, okay, you're warning against it, but you're also still working on it. You're still developing it. You're still putting it out there. Why not pull it all back and say, this is dangerous? And also, how could you not see this coming? Um, if you look at the current brand of uh, state-of-the-art AI system like in chat, GPT, actually, there isn't much of a scientific breakthrough. Like it, it basically has the ingredients we already knew for several years. And so it really came as a surprise that when you scale it up with much more data, much more compute, that it, it it starts behaving more or like at least uh, some aspects of human cognition, intuition, essentially. And uh, and we didn't, nobody expected that. No, okay, but then why keep working on it? Why keep developing it? I mean, all these companies and these CEOs are saying this is really dangerous, you gotta do something about it. But there is still a race to, to improve the technology and to get it out there faster than the other guy. 
Yes, and I think this is the fact that there is competition between companies to do this is, is dangerous. It's, yeah, it means that the ethical standards to do these things uh, might, you know, not be taken as seriously as they should. So and is that's the, exactly why I'm speaking up. So is a solution for governments to to regulate it? I mean, is it easy enough yes. for, for governments to regulate it and say you can only go this far? John, the Center for Artificial Intelligence Security issued yesterday a new statement signed by dozens of experts warning that artificial intelligence could lead to human extinction. Is this warning something that the National Security Council takes seriously at this point? We have taken seriously both the promise and the challenges of artificial intelligence since coming into office. The National Security Council, the National Security advisor, Jake Sullivan, certainly the president. Um, as a matter of fact, I think you know, not long ago, the president convened a meeting here at the White House with CEOs from various tech companies uh, that are involved in either AI research or, uh, uh, or an actual uh, uh, production of, uh, of capabilities. Um, there is promise and there's peril. There's both. And the president wants to see a strong private-public partnership to get after both those the promises uh, and the perils and the you know the, the threats and challenges, uh, so yes, we're taking this extremely seriously. Okay, last question. Okay. Elon Musk's brain implant company Neuralink said on Thursday it had been given a green light from the U.S. FDA to kickstart its first in human clinical study. It's a critical milestone for Neuralink after earlier struggles to gain approval. We're confident that it is possible to restore full body functionality. On at least four occasions since 2019, Musk has said his medical device company would begin human trials for brain implants to treat severe conditions such as paralysis and blindness. Yet the company only sought Food and Drug Administration approval in early 2022 and the agency rejected the application, sources linked to the company told Reuters in March. The sources said the FDA had pointed out several concerns to Neuralink that needed to be addressed before sanctioning human trials. They include the device's battery, as well as safety issues surrounding its wires and the protection of brain tissue. Thursday's FDA approval comes as U.S. lawmakers are urging regulators to investigate the oversight of animal testing at Neuralink. The company has already been the subject of federal probes, including at least one linked to animal testing and treatment. In a tweet on Thursday, Neuralink said it was excited to share the news of the approval, but that it's not yet recruiting for a clinical trial. Over the years, Musk has publicly outlined an ambitious plan for Neuralink. He envisions its devices to cure a range of conditions from obesity, autism, depression, schizophrenia, to enabling web browsing and even telepathy. And that both disabled and healthy individuals would be swiftly getting surgical implants at local centers. Neuralink and the FDA did not immediately respond to a Reuters request for comment. What are your thoughts on uh, Elon Musk's Neuralink? This isn't new. It has a new name. It's getting recognition by the news. But honestly, it's been squelched. It's been covered up for many, many decades. I can track back at least synthetic telepathy or piping voices into people's head uh, right around Kennedy's assassination. But uh, about 1958 was the earliest target I could find. I hope Elon actually succeeds. Because then this isn't imaginary stuff anymore. People will then see, wow, we can really connect brains together and make a hyperintelligence. Health Tech at 11 tonight, Elon Musk's brain implant company called Neuralink says it's gotten permission from U.S. regulators to begin testing its device in people. Musk envisions brain implants could cure a range of conditions, including obesity, autism, depression, and schizophrenia. The device is about the size of a large coin and is designed to be implanted in the skull with ultra-thin wires going directly into the brain. Musk has said the first applications in people would be an attempt to restore vision.
use our own bombs against us. Three billion people died in the fire. Survivors called it Judgment Day. Hiding, starving, the work. People lived like rats in the shadows. Curse. Captured and put into camps for extermination. I was born after the second day. Muhammad, the movement I started could spar with the hardest. A martyr, regarded as Spartac, is hearted. It doesn't matter whose missiles could shoot the farthest. When you're a target in an Afghan Tudorberg forest, close quarters combat over corrupted elections. Build the burgers like cancer, it grows with infection. Nepotism is the gold in the conductor's connection. And ignorance is the prison that the people are kept in. The military ain't there for the people's protection. They're just there to protect an investment. That's why people get arrested, electric. Executed, molested, connected streets are infested with those tired of protesting. Traumatized children thrown to guerrilla garrisons. 9 11 generations pale in comparison. And you will learn a lesson repeated through history that no matter what you think, occupation is not victory. <laughs> <laughs>